This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Still to come on tonight's show, Howard Bloom will be joining me, and uh, it's always great talking to Howard. He is full of information. Uh, he's written a number of books, and uh, Howard Bloom is up next here on the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell. My guest this hour is John Myler. His website's Exxon Nation, aliensinthebible.com, and aliensandtheantichrist.com. John, I, I, I'd just like to let you finish off what you were saying before we had to run to that break about, uh, you know, the creation of Christ. And, you know, why is there only one Christ? Uh, there's only one Christ because the, the Bible says Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. Uh, you know, uh, there, there are a lot of ufologists that mm -hmm. write about the Bible, but I'm a Christian that's writing about the Bible. So everything the Bible says, I do believe. Now, of course, my interpretation of the way I see certain scriptures is going to differ between a lot of Christians, but there are certain things that I do adamantly hold to, and the identity of Jesus is one of those things. Uh, every, every cult and every deception in the world has one thing in common, and that's to attempt to redefine God and who he is. Uh, and the number one deception that's being proliferated by uh, this whole the, the deception side of the ET phenomenon is that God is not who he is. God is uh, an alien race, uh, that we're seeded here by another alien race. Isn't that possible? Uh, no. Why? Uh, scripture, scripture states in Genesis mm -hmm. that we were created by God forming us from the dust of the earth. We are. Of but it also, it also says in Genesis that God created us in his image. So if he, we were created in the image of God, then we are no different than Christ, because Christ was created in the image of God, and according to the Bible, so were we. Being created in the image of God doesn't mean that we are God. That's we're true. Like him. Uh, but as for Jesus, he, he's in a category by himself. The Bible says that he existed before he became mm -hmm. human. The Bible doesn't say that about anybody else. But isn't that the perfect case for reincarnation, then? If, we, if he existed before he came to Earth? Many people who believe in uh, and, uh, and other religious philosophies that believe in reincarnation say that we come back to this planet or to other planets, and could that not be the same for Christ? No, it's not the same for him. Why not? Reincarnation, reincarnation, the word itself, means that you were incarnated before. Mm -hmm. and that you are reincarnating. Jesus was not incarnated before he became human. He but how do we know that, John? How do, how do we know that these stories haven't lost credibility over the years? I am basing what I am saying on the Christian faith. I'm a Christian mm -hmm. that's writing about these things, like extraterrestrials and whatnot. So if you're going to believe in the Bible, then that's what you have to believe. You have to believe that Jesus is God. He's the Son of God. So and how can you be? How can you be the Son of God and God at the same time? This is one of the biggest problems I have. And John, we've just run out of time. Great having you here with us. Look forward to the next time you visit us in the Exxon, Exxon Nation. John Myler has been our guest. Aliensinthebible.com and aliensandtheantichrist.com. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with Howard Bloom as the Exxon continues right here from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada on the Exxon Broadcast Network and the Talk Star Radio Network. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. 
Now on Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at www.drgibbswilliams.com. Shamanism is recognized as a method to access the quantum level. Mastery of shamanic skills puts spiritual information and healing power into your hands. Path Home Shamanic Art School, a bonded Colorado certified occupational school, has met rigorous state standards ensuring its director and instructors have the qualifications to teach the shamanic arts. Path Home offers a certification program in blocks of study. Block 1, a five-day intensive, will be held in the beautiful mountain town of Coldale, Colorado, October 13th through 18th, Registration deadline is September 12th. Experience journey trance, power animals, helping spirits, sacred space, and life purpose. Come discover your power. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, in the magical world of shamanism. Call 303-775-3431 or visit findyourpathhome.com. This is the XM Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. With each new extreme weather event or terrorist act, it becomes increasingly obvious that we live in uncertain and challenging times. We all buy car insurance. Why not collapse and catastrophe insurance? Matthew Stein, an MIT-trained engineer and green builder, has written two outstanding books to help people prepare, plan for, and deal with everything from minor situations lasting a few days to full-on collapse. Matt's first book, When Technology Fails, is a manual for self-reliance, sustainable living, and surviving the long emergency. This massive book covers the gamut from first aid and emergency preparedness to alternative healing, renewable energy, primitive living skills, and 18th century technologies that could be critical to your comfort and survival in a long-lasting crisis. Matt's second book, When Disaster Strikes, is a comprehensive emergency preparedness handbook and survival guide. When Disaster Strikes is an essential item for every family's go-bag. Both books are available at all usual sources. There's a wealth of totally free information posted at whentechfails.com, and author-signed copies may be purchased at mattstein.com that's www.wentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com Welcome back everyone John Myler is our special guest and uh, John how did you uh, what was the sighting that 
or the encounter that catapulted you into investigating the paranormal UFOs and making the biblical connection? Well, I, I would say that, um, like I, I, you mentioned in the biography, I, I had encounters of mm -hmm. my own. Uh, I've seen demons before with my eyes uh, while I was wide awake uh, as a child. Uh, but later in life, when I was in the Army, I actually saw uh, either it was some kind of alien probe or another kind of light form or uh, life form that uh, has a semi uh, a non dimensional structure to it because it flashed on and off as a glowing ball of light about the size of a soccer ball. Uh, this was in the jungle of Panama. Me and Several other people saw this thing. It came up on our position in the jungle, and when it wasn't flashing on, it was invisible. There was absolutely nothing there. We had night goggles, uh, night goggles, uh, and we were looking through those, and we could see absolutely nothing. And then it flashed on, and it circled our position, and then went down the road and circled another position, and then wandered back off into the jungle. Uh, it everything about it resembled intelligence. Uh, but I, I know of no technology that we have that can come close to uh, anything like that. Uh, and and uh, that was probably my major encounter with something otherworldly. Uh, but then uh, after I had my vision uh, when I was 21 uh, with Jesus, I began reading the Bible. And when I came across Genesis chapter 6, I just knew exactly what that was right off the bat with these beings coming from somewhere else, uh, mating with human beings, and then their children were genetic monstrosities of nature. So there's, there's obviously something otherworldly going on. And uh, it struck me that, you know, uh, people define angels as non-physical beings, but the, the fact of the matter is they, they are physical beings. Everything in Scripture describes them as having physical properties. Mm -hmm but they can also transcend this physical dimension as well. So they are physical, but they can do things like walk through walls because they have control over their dimensional structure. And uh, I just understood that uh, from right off the bat, reading the Bible. But uh, I, I was kind of amazed that other people didn't, didn't see it the same way as I did. Could you tell us in, in, in more detail the sighting or the vision you had of Jesus Christ and... Uh... What were you doing? Were you asleep? Did you was this in the middle of the night? Was it in the middle of the day? Had you been stressed out? Uh, apparently, this is something that runs in the family because my great grandmother also saw Jesus, but hers was a little more dramatic than mine. I think uh, mm -hmm. she actually was awake, and he walked into her room on one occasion. But with mine, I was asleep, and it was a dream that I had. Uh, where Jesus came to me and he showed me different things. And this was basically the worst, lowest time in my life. Uh, I was wallowing in sin. Uh, and anyway, during the dream, Jesus came to me and he, he revealed to me that if I didn't stop, uh, if I kept going the, the way I was going, I was either going to be dead or in jail for the rest of my life. Uh, most likely dead, though. And that was the warning. I just turned 21. I reached the age of accountability, and he was letting me know that that umbrella of protection I'd been mm -hmm. under all that time was being taken away if I didn't change. And uh, when I woke up, in part of, in all the dream, I didn't physically see Jesus. I saw where he was sitting in a chair because I saw an indentation in the chair uh, through the different things he was showing me. And, uh I knew it was somebody there, and it was something very familiar about that person, but I couldn't see him. And the question popped into my head as soon as I woke up. Who was that sitting in that chair questioning me and, and you know, showing me all these things? And I heard his name spoken audibly into my ear, Jesus. And that's when instantly, in a second, I changed from the way I was to... Uh, all of my addictions and everything that I was involved in, just completely, I, I was able to do a 180 in my life at that time without any effort whatsoever. Uh, and then after that, that's when I started reading the Bible 
and uh, I was like, okay, well, step number one, where's the Bible? I'm going to read it. And I read it from cover to cover. Uh, and started going to church and everything after that. But you know, these things opened, uh, you know, that's when I became aware of, of everything that I saw, you know, in the Bible. It was just highlighted to me. John, I was wondering if you'd share with us some of the books you've written. Some of the books I've written? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, back in 1999, um, I wrote Aliens in the Bible, uh, and that was my first uh, research project where I was taking, uh, well, it actually started with an article, but I, I expanded, expounded on the article uh, that I wrote and posted on the Internet and made it into this book. Uh, and then continued to do research and compile things over the years. And uh, almost a decade after that, uh, I wrote Aliens and the Antichrist, uh, which is kind of like Aliens in the Bible, second edition. Uh, has a lot more extensive research, uh, different things that I found out, uh, some places where I found... Um, some of the pieces that I was missing to the puzzle I was trying to put together in Aliens in the Bible, kind of, they finally mm -hmm. fit together. And so Aliens and the Antichrist completes that. Uh, and then the, the Eagle Star Prophecy is more along the lines of my personal testimony, uh, what exactly happened to me uh, that changed my personality. Uh, it was really a, literally a uh, Ebenezer Scrooge-type moment. You know how he... He goes to bed one night and wakes up a yeah. completely different person, and everybody's freaked out because by the way he's acting is so different. That's exactly what happened with me, and uh, that's what the book Eagle Star Prophecy is about. Uh, my visions of heaven, which I've had two when I was 12 years old, uh, and then my encounter with Jesus when I was 21, and uh, some other odds and ends in that book. What does heaven look like? Oh, wow. Um, uh, I was in two different areas. Mm -hmm. um, one area was in the country, so I wasn't in the city in my in my uh, first vision. Um, I remember seeing grass and trees, and the grass was so brilliant green that I could see each individual blade for probably hundreds of yards away. It's hard to describe that kind of vision. Uh, the color. The amazing colors of everything around me was, was staggering. Uh, but that's not what was most noticeable about it. Uh, the, the most prominent feature of the kingdom is God's presence, because when you're there, mm -hmm. it's like you're swimming in liquid love. It's, it's all around you. It's blowing through you. It's, and it's so overwhelmingly powerful that you're almost not aware of yourself anymore. It's like you're you're at one with God when you're just there, and that was the most amazing thing about it. And uh, and the first dream I saw, I saw God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And and, uh, and then the second vision, I didn't see him, uh, but a cross appeared in the sky and pulled me up into the air, and I stuck to this cross and. Uh, which I don't know exactly what that means. Maybe I'm going to be a martyr or something. I don't know. But uh, when I stuck to the cross, God, mm -hmm. His Spirit filled me. And that that was that same experience that I told you about, uh, you know, where you feel God's presence and it's just so overpowering that you lose self-awareness. Tell me, John, have you caught any flack in the Christian arena for, from, uh, you know, for having the interest that you have? Uh, yes and no. Um, it depends on, on who I'm communicating with and mm -hmm. stuff. I, I have caught some flack. Uh, not, not anything major. You know, I haven't been kicked out of a church or anything like that. Uh, and, but uh, I have uh, encountered people that, that just refuse to, you know, accept any possible interpretation other than what they've already accepted and, and are not willing to budge on. Um, a lot of things I can understand that kind of a stance, like the doctrine of evolution, for example, it leads to some things like the Holocaust, if you believe in that hook, line, and sinker. But the, you know, 
the possibility that extraterrestrials exist in the cosmos doesn't necessarily have to lead to uh, somebody endorsing something like the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there's people out there that will argue that point, and, and they're very dogmatic about it. Well, and, uh, when it comes to the Holocaust, there certainly is enough evidence to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that it really did happen. So how anyone can even try to deny the Holocaust is not real it is beyond me. Oh, that's unconscionable, uh, you know, what, mm -hmm. what's being said uh, in, in media in yes. certain countries about that. That's, that's ridiculous. Uh, but, um, you know, to, I understand how, how the doctrine of evolution can lead to somebody, you know, having that kind of morality and justifying movements in a country like the Nazi movement. Because it was all basically founded on the doctrine of evolution, the survival of the fittest, the supreme race. That's where he got the whole inspiration for it. And and anybody who who endorses the doctrine of evolution uh, to that extent is endorsing a way of thinking that says we exist for no reason. Uh, you might as well take advantage of why you're here because this is it. This is all there is. You have no help, uh, hope of salvation, no hope of an afterlife, no actual reason for existing to begin with, because you're a cosmic accident. And, and if you take that to its logical conclusion, you will become the most selfish person, and your purpose in living in life is going to be to do whatever you can to get as most as you can. John, stand by. We've got to take our news break. John Myler is our special guest. www.aliensinthebible.com and www.aliensandtheantichrist.com. We'll be back on the other side of the news. Don't go away. It was a terrifying experience. I thought we was going to go to jail for murder. That day, you know, we were a little behind, so we worked until it was starting to get dark. We loaded up the equipment and hadn't driven very far when we caught glimmers of this glow coming through the trees. I urged Mike to hurry up and get up there. Travis had the door open before we even stopped. As he got closer, I heard the sound. One of the guys said, you feel that? I really panicked then. I told him, get the hell out of here. It didn't come directly to me. It came to a, a deputy sheriff. Three of us volunteered right away to tell him what had happened. Sheriff Gillespie definitely didn't believe it. He says that we better be certain because we're getting a lot of trouble. When we went to search the next day, they split us up, and the whole time the deputies asked me, you know, if you just tell us where the body is, we can all go home and get this over with. We're talking about a hundred people combing through the wooded area. Nothing turns up. All week long, I've been hearing they're going to set it up to make you guys look guilty. We're a rough-looking bunch then. Some of us have been in trouble with the law before. And y'all ain't never going to come out of that jailhouse. We couldn't get out. I tried to sneak out the back door of the day of the polygraph test. I was scared to death. And on top of that, you have media. I literally would be on two telephones at the same time. We even got some coops in here now that's coming in and out to see the freak show, as they call it. Everyone dissents. I just wasn't going to stand there and listen to it anymore. Granny says, this is Travis. I'm back. I need help. When I did hear that he had been returned, it was almost as unbelievable as the original thing. I just looked at my mom and says, I told you we didn't kill him. Travis Walton reappeared after several days with a bizarre story about a ride in an unidentified flying object. People were desperate to explain it away. Why are you sticking up with Travis for all this time? You know this really didn't happen. What happened to Travis after we took off in that truck, I can't tell you. I hated Travis for a long time after this. My whole world just tore up. But I believe every word Travis said about it. He's never lied to me about nothing. It's a net negative. We lost our jobs in the immediate aftermath. And now you're not able to talk about it with anyone because you know that they're going to laugh at you, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. But if you don't come out and tell your story, somebody else is going to tell it for you. There's a degree of responsibility. Uh, certainly, I have to accept the bad. If I can direct what's happened in a way that I can make something good happen in the world, I'm looking for it.
Order your copy of Travis, The True Story of Travis Walton today at www.travaswaltonthemovie.com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7, 365. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. John Myler is our special guest, and uh, John has two websites, www.aliensinthebible.com and www.aliensandtheantichrist.com. He is the author of Aliens and the Antichrist, Aliens in the Bible, and The Eagle Star Prophecy. Once again, his website's www.aliensinthebible.com and Aliens and the Antichrist dot com. Um, do you think it's hard for most Christians to accept the notion of intelligent life elsewhere in the universe, John? Uh, yes, I do. I, I've come to the conclusion that uh, the strong delusion 
spoken of in the Bible, mm-hmm. uh, which is uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 through 12. Uh, it speaks about a massive deception that's coming to the earth in the future, and it's going to deceive people in every religion in the world. It's going to involve some kind of science with hard evidence. Uh, it's going to be something completely unexpected something on the peripheral, maybe something that people even make fun of at this point in time. Uh, The whole UFO thing fits this deception exactly. So does global warming. uh, uh, Global warming. Uh, I I don't even know about that. (laughs) But but, uh, concerning uh, uh, extraterrestrial life, Mm -hmm. the Bible says that um, God is going to send this strong delusion, and it's going to be something... So powerful that you know, people are just not going to be able to see it. Like they're going to be blind to it. And uh, to a certain extent, I think Christians, while I believe they will be okay spiritually, I mean, their relationship with God is going to be okay. That's the most important thing of all. Uh, but they may not be able to see all of the details of, that are behind this deception for what they are. Um, which makes it even more powerful because they won't be able to come up with. Uh, reasons to explain it. Um, you know, in the future, for example, if we actually develop the technology, uh, which would probably be reverse engineered stuff that we already have our hands on, uh, and we're able to go to their planets mm-hmm. and see for ourselves with our own eyes that there is life out there, there's going to be a lot of Christians who are going to have a hard time dealing with that. They're not going to know how to explain it. Uh, and that, that's my mission. Uh, just in case we do come across something like that, I've already done the research in advance. I have possibilities is uh, what I'm saying. Uh, and I'm not arguing that w- everything that I am suggesting in my work is flawless and, you know, oh, this is exactly how the interpretation is. What I am saying is you might want to consider these possible interpretations in case something like this does happen so you're not scrambling and, and you got a big question mark on your forehead because you have no idea how to explain this or how to reconcile it with your faith. That's what I'm saying. Where does the Antichrist fit into the entire UFO scenario? Uh, he fits all over the place. Um, first of all, it starts back in uh, in Genesis. I believe it's in chapter 3 where, where Jesus first said, uh, or, or where God first pronounced the curse uh, and, and said uh, to Eve that there's going to be enmity or, uh, between her seed, between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. Mm-hmm. And the seed mentioned is a biological seed for her. So I see no reason why it shouldn't be considered a biological seed of Satan. And, uh, you know, I always had wondered, there's an interesting fact about what happened with the fallen angels. The angels that got thrown down into Tartarus, as mentioned in Jude and also in, uh, in other, in, uh, I believe, Second Peter, they got thrown into Tartarus for fornicating with humans uh, back in Genesis chapter 6. It's also mentioned uh, in uh, the, books of, uh, the book of Enoch. Uh, well... Why is it that these fallen angels got thrown in there and not Satan? Well, the reason why is because Satan didn't commit that sin that those fallen angels were doing back in chapter 6. And he specifically didn't commit it, and not because he's any better than any of them. I'm pretty certain of that, because he started this whole thing. He's the one that instigated all of sin to begin with. He, in fact, convinced these angels to do what they were doing. But he withheld himself from doing it, and I'm thinking the reason why is because that's his trump card. I think he's coming back in the end. He's going to do exactly what they were doing back in Genesis chapter 6 and uh, pull out that trump card. And the Antichrist himself, I'm thinking, is probably going to be a Nephilim, part fallen angel, part human. That's how he fits. He's, He's actually got a biological connection to these things. You know, the Nephilim uh, fit the criteria of the ancient Greek gods the, who used to live atop Mount Olympus. Yes, exactly. And, you know, people might have uh, wondered, uh, 
you know, why is it that uh, when you talk about uh, demons, that they're always pictured as these weird, mm -hmm. uh, like half human, half something else creatures with horns, and and you know, some of them have supernatural powers, and and uh, you know, they're where the heck do they come from? They, they obviously weren't created by God. Well, the the Nephilim died because they were mortal. Uh, they're human. They did live an extremely long time, mm -hmm. but they did die. And their spirits are what we now call demons. So the idea that demons and fallen angels are the same thing, they're not. Fallen angels can't die, uh, according to Luke 20, 36. Angels cannot die. But when a fallen angel mates with a human being and they have a child that's a Nephilim, the Nephilim is mortal. And when it dies, it becomes a demon. So that's where the demons come from. Mm. So, so is it is it safe to say that that the uh, the Nephilim were basically hybrids between ETs and, and Earthlings? Yes, I do believe so. And uh, you know, my, I have a, a whole explanation about uh, the origin of angels, which you know you don't really get from mm -hmm. the Bible reading it at face value. You have to read it and then think about it um, and then uh, put clues together to piece where the angels came from and uh, the origin of the angels. Um, but anyway, uh, the way it works is that angels, I believe, they used to be like us because Scripture says that we're going to be like the angels. We're going to be made into this glorified uh completely immortal state in our future. So God has that planned for us, and I think he originally had it planned for us to begin with, even before we fell. And I think he creates other species out there in the cosmos. He has before. And they went through the same cycle as Adam and Eve did. And two-thirds of them passed the test. They didn't fail like we did. They passed. They, they were angels, and they're glorified beings. They're in unity with God. One third of them are not. One third of them are like us. They failed, but the majority of them, I think, are probably fallen angels. And Satan was the leader of them. And his throne was here on this planet before Adam and Eve were ever created. And it even says right up, uh, straight up in, in uh, Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah chapter 14, it talks about Satan's fall before Adam and Eve were ever created because Satan had sinned before we ever sinned. And he was the one that unleashed sin here on the earth by tempting Adam and Eve. And so that's where it all started. Is it possible, John, that is it, is it possible that the Bible is actually a story about genetics from an early time? And since they could not explain or, ha or since those who wrote the Bible, especially Moses, had no concept of of genetics or DNA experimentation or or any of the science that we are just developing now is 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 it possible especially since we've just agreed that the nephilim or the nephilim were basically hybrids between one species and another is it possible that there is no great mystery surrounding the Bible and biblical events, except that this is science that we are just rediscovering now, and that those who we presume to be gods were just extraterrestrials or visitors from another planet. Uh, I do very well believe that it's a strong possibility that um, the sons of God mentioned in Genesis 6 were experimenting with genetics. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think that Moses was totally oblivious to that. Uh, if you read the wording uh, where it speaks of Noah, it states that Noah was pure in his generations. And it's talking about physical purity. Uh, and the word generations is where we get genetics from. Uh, our word for genetics comes from that. So he was talking about Noah's genetics. The reason, one of the reasons why Noah was selected to go aboard the ark is because he wasn't an Ephilim. He was pure in his genetics. And all of the animals that were rescued were obviously, they were not tainted with Nephilim. And when you see about all, all these demons, all these non-human, weird-looking 
part human things. Well, they were experimenting with the animal kingdom. Genesis 6-4 actually uh, states that the whole flat, uh, all the flesh on the earth had corrupted its way upon the earth. So if you ask me, I think it's possible that the sons of God mentioned there uh, were doing a lot of genetic experimenting and just unleashing things on the earth, uh, uh, wreaking havoc on all civilization here on this planet with uh, these genetic monstrosities of nature that they were unleashing. Uh, some of these beings, I mean, they had superpowers. They might have been imbued with supernatural power. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much everything we see within the Greek legends comes from these beings, and I think a lot of it could have been genetic experimentation. Where do you think we're heading for in the next few years regarding alien contact or, or, or even the rapture and the return of Christ himself? Um, concerning extraterrestrial life in general, I, I am thinking, uh, you know, we've, the government has funded different, different kinds of uh, surveys and stuff, like they sent the, this one out uh, a couple years back uh, known as the Bigelow Report mm -hmm. and another one even before that. Uh, wanting to know uh, how would theologians deal with the existence of extraterrestrial life? And they had a, a list of questions dealing with extraterrestrial life. And, it, well, you know, my question is, why would the government even fund such a survey if there was no such thing? If it, You know, why would they even wonder? You know, where's, that, where's America at? Should we reveal to the populace uh, what we already know? That's what it sounds like to me. Uh, and they're waiting. And... Uh, We'll probably be seeing another survey before long, uh, and they're going to want to recap and, and get a, a new point of view on this, because obviously a lot of Christians uh, are asking questions now, and books like mine are getting published. Uh, not exactly like mine. It's more along the lines of, it's all demonic, it's all deception. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, And mine is more along the lines of, well, there's good guys out there, too, uh, Revelation 14.6 says that angels are going to be coming here to the earth and preaching the gospel in the future. And uh, if what I'm saying, if what I'm theorizing is correct, that might mean a lot more than what, what most Christians think. I mean, you could have uh, tons of demonic beings running around or, you know, fallen angelic beings or beings aligned with Satan coming here and spreading all kinds of deception. And we know that. We, it's already happening. Uh, you know, these things come, their messages always line up with some kind of thing linking to evolution. And, you know, uh, the, uh, the creation.com website is, is up on all of that. They got that picture, that side of the picture, very good. The part that they're missing is the angels coming and preaching the gospel and, and the fact that there really is extraterrestrial life, which will give more strength to the deception itself. Because if they're putting all of their eggs in one basket that there is no extraterrestrial life and that's how they're refuting this deception then they're gonna have to rework some things when they have when they see that there really is extra uh, extraterrestrial life out there but uh, yeah I see a lot of that in the future tell me who was Jesus Christ uh, I believe Jesus Christ is exactly who the Bible says he is uh, it is through him that all creation, that the universe and everything in it was created. Jesus is not an alien. Uh, he is not a created being. He is God uh, who became flesh. But that, that goes contrary to what you and I have been talking about this past hour. It uh, does not go contrary to it at all. Well, if, we're, if we were talking about... If we Jesus were... is in a category all by himself. He's God. Why? To suggest that he's part alien, part human would mm -hmm. say that he's a Nephilim, and that would that would go against everything. Well, if That's if he, you know, like if his father is God, and his mother is a mortal, doesn't that yes. make him a genetic hybrid as well? He's fully God and fully man, according to Scripture. What's the difference between that and other genetic manipulation well, it, that's it, talked it, about in the Bible? Different between there's a big difference between tinkering around with genetics mm -hmm. or going against your own nature as an angel that has been translated into a mortal status. Jesus said, "Angels neither marry nor are they given in marriage. They are given a mandate to no longer do that. Uh, it's part of their new nature to be uh, celibate." 
All right, stand However, by. We've got to take a commercial break. We'll be back. John okay. Myler is our special guest. And John and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada on the all-new Exxon Broadcast Network and Talk Star Radio. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash XZone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exome Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exome Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7, 365. Coming soon to the Exxon Broadcast Network is a different perspective with me, Kevin Randall, as your host. We'll be taking a close look at what is happening in the world of UFOs today with side trips into the paranormal. Guests will range from those who are household names to those who have a different perspective on a variety of topics. No topic will be taboo, but there will be tough questions asked as we all search for the truth about UFOs, the paranormal, and those things that excite us. Sometimes we'll agree with a guest and sometimes we won't, but we'll try to keep the program topical. For those of you who would like to read, be sure to visit www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com and remember to listen to the other fine programs on the X-Zone Broadcast Network at www.xzbn.net. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st Century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. 
As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. GeneX provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life is no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying, is available on Amazon and at stores worldwide wherever books are sold. And welcome to the x everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the all-new x Broadcast Network and the Talkstar Radio Network. Toll-free worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. That's toll-free worldwide at 1-800-610-7035. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, you can always chat with someone here at the x by simply using the MSN address TV at hotmail.com and our websites www.xzoneradiotv.com and if you'd like to watch, listen, and um, see some of the uh, some of the great stuff that we have going on on Xzone TV, it's www.xzonetv.com. My first guest tonight is John Myler. And uh, John is the author of several books and radio talk show guest for many, many programs. His interest is understanding paranormal phenomenon, and his interest began at the age of five after he- uh, hearing his great-grandmother's tale of seeing a UFO hover over the plains of Kentucky during broad daylight shortly following the turn of the century. This story, as well as numerous otherworldly encounters of his own, fueled his quest of the unknown. Then, when he reached the age of 21 and was visited by none other than Jesus Christ in a vision, uh, since that time, John has become a born-again Christian, yet continues to investigate paranormal phenomenon using the Bible to interpret his findings. John has earned two associate degrees and a bachelor degree in business. He is currently pursuing a master's in divinity and works full, full-time as a master sergeant in the Air National Guard. John, welcome back to the x Great having you with us. And uh, I still, I see you're still right at it, investigating the paranormal as well as UFO sightings. And, and, and it seems like you're busier now than you were the last time you and I talked. Uh, yeah, I am uh, pretty busy. Um, uh, got a lot of personal things going on right now. I'm, I'm moving mm-hmm. uh, from one city to another, but uh, in the interim, I, I just recently wrote an article, so I guess it's uh, gathered some attention. Um, and, it, and it all basically started with an email I sent to uh, creation.com website, which, you know, it just started with sort of a, a simple query about extraterrestrial life because they had information on there that was basically adamant you know there is no such thing as extraterrestrials and so i popped the question out like uh, well what's an angel and uh you know that mm-hmm. the responses that uh, bounce back and forth uh, i felt were worthy of another article so that's uh where that article came from titled cosmic salvation uh but i'm guessing that's uh 
that might have something to do with why you contacted me. Well, it's it's always good to have guests on that we haven't had in a while to check in with them, see what they're doing. And, yeah. and uh, I have to ask you, what is an angel? Uh, well, by definition, an angel is an intelligent being not native to Earth, which, uh, you know, I, I said that that makes it mm-hmm. synonymous with an extraterrestrial in my book. Uh, but according to uh, the person I was corresponding with on the website, they said, no, angels are interdimensional, not extradimensional, uh, or, or interdimensional, not extraterrestrial. And, uh, well, I think that uh, they're both. But um, and, and, and as far as I understand it, most ufologists think that mm-hmm. extraterrestrials are also uh, other dimensional beings as well because of the characteristics of their spacecraft. Um from what we understand, uh, they are able to pop in and out of our dimension in order to travel through wormholes to get from one end of the galaxy to the other. And, uh, well, he said, no, no, there's, you know, all these dogmatic reasons why that can't be the case. But uh, in my book, uh, angels and extraterrestrials are the same thing. All right, John, please stand by. You and I have to take our first two-minute break. John Myler is our special guest, Exo Nation. John's going to be with us this hour talking about everything from UFOs to ETs and much more. If you'd like more information, www.aliensinthebible.com. That's www.aliensinthebible.com and www.aliensandtheantichrist.com That's aliensandtheantichrist.com John Myler and I will return on the other side of this two-minute commercial break as the Exxon continues live from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada on the all-new Exxon Broadcast Network and Talkstar Radio. Radio. 